findings indicate that in patients with type 2 diabetes who are free of established cardiovascular disease and taking metformin, the addition of an SGLT2 inhibitor as a second-line therapy was associated with a reduced risk of cardiovascular events compared to the addition of other second-line diabetes therapies. Additionally, in head-to-head -head comparisons of SGLT2 inhibitors, there was no difference in risk suggesting that SGLT2 inhibitors as a class may have widespread benefit in preventing cardiovascular disease among patients with type 2 diabetes. My name is Wendy Wang, and I am a postdoctoral fellow at the University of Minnesota School of Public Health, and our article titled SGLT2 inhibitors are associated with reduced cardiovascular disease in patients with type 2 diabetes, an analysis of real-world data will be appearing in an upcoming issue of Bayo Clinic Proceedings. So we use data from the market scan databases, which is a large claims database that includes enrollment records and billing claims for inpatient, outpatient, and pharmacy services. Using data from 2013 to 19, we conducted a matched analysis of over 300,000 patients with type 2 diabetes who are taking metformin and also a second-line diabetes therapy. We had found that SGLT2 inhibitor users had a lower risk of cardiovascular disease compared to users of other second-line therapies. In addition, when the cardiovascular outcomes of stroke, atrial fibrillation, myocardial infarction, and heart failure were assessed separately, significant associations were also observed. And we had also conducted head-to-head -head comparisons among three of the SGLT2 inhibitors, which included canagliflozin, dapagliflozin, and empagliflozin. In this head-to-head -head analysis, risk of cardiovascular events did not differ meaningfully based on type of SGLT2 inhibitor. Current clinical guidelines indicate that there are several preferred treatment options that can be combined with metformin as a second-line diabetes therapy. There are several second-line therapies that have shown to be effective in secondary prevention. However, a unique aspect of our study was that we looked at the primary prevention of cardiovascular disease since we had excluded patients with established cardiovascular disease at baseline. As a result, our study provides additional insight into the effectiveness of SGLT2 inhibitors for primary prevention of cardiovascular disease among patients with type 2 diabetes on metformin. This finding for patients showed that our results are applicable to a broader population of patients who may have been excluded from clinical trials, such as those with multiple comorbidities. In addition, since there are several treatment options that can be combined with metformin, our findings indicate that it may be beneficial to initiate SGLT2 inhibitors as a second-line therapy. As a result, our findings can further aid patients in deciding which second-line therapy to choose. Next steps for this line of research should include determining how to optimize care in patients with type 2 diabetes. SGLT2 inhibitors have been shown to have cardiovascular benefits. However, adoption rates are likely lower than expected. Therefore, future research should assess how to get adoption rates of SGLT2 inhibitors higher, as well as ensuring high adherence for those who would benefit. Um, so thank you for listening to this overview of our article, and we invite you to read this article in an upcoming issue of Mayo Clinic Proceedings. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you'll find access to information for our social media content such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.